Sandler's Wells has certainly earned his place amongst the Coolmore champions with an outstanding racing career which saw him as an undefeated two-year-old and a triple Group 1 winner as a three-year-old. His racing career began as it was to continue in impressive style. In the General Assembly maiden stakes over seven furlongs, he gave Pat Edry one of the easiest rides of his career, drawing clear of the field to defeat Serrano. Another cakewalk here, and it's Sadler's Wells, another Sancter, O'Brien and Edry win, and what an easy win it is. Going on, Sadler's Wells, the winner, Serrano is second, in third place comes Sancter. So, at the end of the season, Sadler's Wells was undefeated, having won both his races by a total of 12 lengths. This resulted in him being rated above all but his brilliant stable companion, El Gran Senor, in the Irish Free Handicap. The 1984 Epsom Derby winner, Secreto, was no less than 18 pounds below him. How good a two-year-old did his trainer, Vincent O'Brien, believe Sadler's Wells to be? As a two-year-old, he only ran twice and he won both of his races by uh, big margins. And uh, um, the second, his second run, uh, the Barrister Stakes, um, uh, showed him to be um, an exceptionally high-class two-year-old because he won it uh, just as he pleased by about eight lengths, I think. Clearly, another success for the bold policy of running their horses in top-class company. Now, it has to be said that some people have accused the Sangster Syndicate of being frightened around their horses. Well, let us put it this way. Between April and October 1984, Sadler's Wells ran a total of nine races, hardly what you would call lightly raced. This tough and thoroughly genuine racehorse, as time form so rightly described him, opened his three-year-old account over ten furlongs in the Derrinstown Stud Derby Trial before reverting to the mile of the early Coolmore Irish 2000 guineas. Here he took on the Epsom Derby hero Secreto, Procida, a Group 1 winner on both sides of the Atlantic, and the group winners Hegemony and Roussillon. Side Rousselon with fiery curl, but it's Sadler's Wells in the lead as they race inside the final furlong. Sadler's Wells proceed on Secreto as they race towards the finish. Sadler's Wells with proceed on the inside and going to the line. It's Sadler's Wells from Procida. What That's did journalist Sadler. Tony Morris think of this classic performance? Well, I think Sadler's Wells was very impressive. He showed a combination of speed, courage, and class, which were really the hallmarks of his entire season. Following this classic victory, Sadler's Wells travelled to France for their derby, the Prix du Jockey Club. Ranged against him here with the French champions Darshan and Long Mick, the Prix Lupin winner Daha, the group winners Rainbow Quest, Kia even tougher. The group one Coral Eclipse Stakes, the only three-year-old in the field, and up against some of Europe's most experienced middle distance performers. Winners like Time Charter, who with the Oaks and King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes already to our credit, had just previously raced to victory in the Group 1 Coronation Stakes at Ascot. Another tough opponent was Morcon, undefeated in all three of his outings that season, seen here winning the Group 2 Prince of Wales Stakes at Ascot. And also in this exceptional lineup for the Coral Eclipse Stakes were Crystal Glitters, winner of the Group 1 Predis Pahan for the second time, Group 1 Victress Cormorant Wood, and Arlington winner Ptolemeo, as well as the classic victor Wassel. Sadler's Wells showed his true class to quicken away from this outstanding field. The horse was going so easy throughout the race that um, I was able to sit down and bide my time and go when I wanted to. And, um, you know, he beat some really top animals that day. And Time Charter and Morcon, all good horses behind him. What did Tony Morris think of this performance? Well, Sadler's Wells did exactly the same as at the Curra. There was the class, there was the speed, and stamina as well this time. Ten furlongs, a testing ten furlongs, and he did it very nicely. 
On Darman Day at Ascot, Sadler's Wells gained his revenge on Darshan in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Darman Stakes. The race was run at a blistering pace, and Sadler's Wells must take tremendous credit for going in such courageous pursuit of European Horse of the Year, Tinoso. Although he couldn't catch that magnificent performer on his day of days, Sadler's Wells did account for not only Darshan, but Ptolemyo, Time Charter, Sun Princess, Daha, and Jupiter Island as well. His final Group 1 victory was in the inaugural running of the Phoenix Champion Stakes, Europe's richest race. Many of his old rivals were again lined up in opposition, as well as Princess Patty, who made the running. But at the finish, Sadler's Wells quickened and resolutely held on from Seattle Song. Um, I let my fellow go about two furlongs from home, and then that, uh, the French horse came there, Seattle Song, with a burst, and uh, Sadler's Wells, you know, being so tough as he is, he, he quickened again. His victory was made all the more impressive when Seattle Song went on to cross the Atlantic and beat the field in the Group 1 Washington, D.C. International. It is interesting to note how well Sadler's Wells might have fared in the American Free Handicap in 1984. In the European version, he was rated two pounds higher than Seattle Song and no less than nine pounds above Alpha Betim. How would Vincent O'Brien sum up his career looking forward to his life at stud? I'm very confident that Sadler's Wells will, will follow in the footsteps of, um, of the other great horses that have been here and be a successful stallion. Um, he was such a game horse and um, he was a very sound horse, best of limbs, good looking hard-looking individual and of course he proved himself so, such a tough horse then he's got a top-class pedigree he's a northern dancer and uh, tracing to the Dalmary line which has been so successful but I, I think his chances of making a stallion are very high Sandler's Wells is out of a half-sister to Nureyev, who has made such a sensational start to his stud career. European champion first season sir in 1984, with ten stakes winners from his first crop. Sandler's Wells epitomizes all that's required in the modern thoroughbred. Bred like a champion, he had the speed to win a classic over a mile, was a superlative performer at one and a quarter miles, and had the class to carry his speed to the European classic distance of 12 furlongs. Never run a bad race. He's a beautifully bred horse, and he has what I think is a fine thing of selling. He seems to have a temperament, and he has the uh, soundness to him that, that is what breeders should be looking for. An exciting racehorse, and with that pedigree as well, no wonder he's regarded by many as the most exciting sour prospect of the modern era. I think he's very tough and uh, he's very consistent. Perhaps I should say something that they will not like very much, but I think he's probably better than El Grand Senor. I always thought so because he's tough, he's really tough. And he's classy. He has all the qualities and he has a marvelous reading being by the family of Noyev. A fact which is supported by the quality of his first book of mares, which include these three outstanding animals, Alma Jest, the Dam of Ptolemyo, Oaks heroine, Sun Princess, and champion and dam of a champion, Typecast. Not forgetting Glass Slipper, the dam of classic winners, Light Cavalry and Fairy Footsteps. Sadler's Wells must make his mark. He's as tough a horse as we've seen for a number of years. Consistently good horse, plenty of speed, good looking horse, tough as the come, he must make it. He's by the right sire, of course, too. And if he's going to live up to these expectations, he couldn't be going to a better place to achieve these goals.